Hello guys and welcome to my new video and today we're going to be ranking every single healer in Dragonflight based on their difficulty. This video is going to be aimed at new players returning to World of Warcraft that are looking to pick up an easy healer in the next expansion. Like many things in life, a lot of the healers here are going to be easy to pick up but will require a lot of time to master and it is important to note that I'm looking at Raid and Mythic Plus and I'm combining those in order to make my ranking. You should also keep in mind that there are multiple things that can make a healer difficult for someone who's looking to start the game for the first time. For example, there is a big difference between healers that are reactive and proactive. Reactive healers see damage or see someone who is taking damage, they're going to heal them. Proactive healers requires you to set up or do ramps or start healing before damage is happening. So technically speaking, a lot of the times for new players, proactive healers are going to be more difficult to pick up for the first time. Mainly because it requires you to read up on boss and trash mechanics in order to optimize your HPS. And on top of that, I urge you to watch the summary version of the video because there's going to be certain changes in the ranking because certain healers have multiple builds. Some can play range, some can play melee. There's also healers that can be extremely difficult depending on raid or mythic plus situations and if you enjoy these type of videos if you enjoy this type of content like and subscribe it really helps out the channel and this is the ranking that i'm going to be using again you can see s tier and d tier this might be a little bit confusing but s tier means the easiest or the best beginners healer and d tier or anything below that is going to be healers that are a little bit more difficult to pick up for someone who's entering world of workout for the first time and let's go and get started with the first healer and honestly i don't think a lot of people were doubting this but holy priest is going to retain the position in my eyes as the number one pick for anyone who's looking to start healing in world of warcraft or dragonflight because it is essentially one of the best beginners healers there's quite a few things that are changing for holy priest in shadowlands to dragonflight and a lot of them are quite positive flash concentration is no longer going to be available there's going to be a miniature version of that in terms of light weaver which is a lot more fun and easier to optimize because you can just cast flash shield and heal when people need some sort of healing you're an extremely reactive healer, you are a ranged healer, which again are very big positives for someone who's looking to start healing for the first time. On top of that, a lot of your raid complexity comes from the fact how can you squeeze in multiple divine hymns or how many divine hymns can you squeeze in in a fight? How many holy word salvations can you use? So outside of being a very reactive healer, Holy Priest single target healing is quite strong. You have splash healing with Trail of Light. You have Holy Word spells that you can weave in. You have a lot of ways to optimize your healer, but on the surface level, to pick up and play Holy Priest in a semi-decent capacity, it's not overly difficult. And then I have to mention the Holy Priest or Priest, if you do end up playing a Priest in Dragonflight, you have two healing specs available, which no other healing class can provide, which means that you can pick up Holy Priest, which is essentially one of the easiest healers to begin with. And when you start climbing and wanting for something more, you can start opting into Discipline Priest, which is one of the highest skill ceiling healers in this game. Now let's go to our second healer, and this might be a surprise for a lot of people but i'm going to be placing restoration shaman in this spot again it's important to differentiate healing class power from healing complexity or healing rotation complexity because resto shaman a lot of people are going to be off put by the fact that he has so many or can have so many buttons to press or keybind based on your talent build in spec tree or class tree so you might have to make use of certain macros with modifier keys in order to squeeze in all the abilities on your action bar but that does not mean resto shaman is overly difficult to play because your healing rotation in raid and mythic plus especially mythic plus it's very very simplistic you're still a very reactive healer you see some people taking damage you're going to heal them your dps rotation is not overly difficult and i think the fact that you're ranged is also a big big plus i think the main source of complexity for resto shaman stems from cloudburst totem which is a proactive ability but a lot of the times for new players who are playing resto shaman just using cloudburst on cooldown is going to net you decent results until you actually learn the fights and you can optimize this ability a bit more and if you're someone completely new you might even opt out of cloudburst totem and use healing stream totem because it can still provide decent hps values and resto shaman without cloudburst totem is just a holy priest with a bunch more ability is to key by and now let's go to our next sealer and that is going to be somewhat surprising but honestly i want your opinions on this because i'm really uncertain about 
Preservation of Ochre being in this tier, but the fact that Preservation of Ochre fits between ranged and melee playstyle, I think the fact that it is placed between ranged healers and there's going to be melee healers is somewhat appropriate. I think at the end of the day, a lot of people are still learning Preservation of Ochre, and I think a lot of people might find it difficult, a lot of people might find it that within a couple of days, they really, really grown to like Preservation, they don't think it's overly difficult. I think a lot of your healing stems from being reactive healer, you have unprecedented power for your burst healing capability which can really help out in raid and mythic plus content when something goes wrong you have things like tip the scales and rewind which are really really powerful you do have some proactive elements to preservation of Oka. you do have stasis which is a talent that's basically convoke the spirits or build your own convoke the spirits with cloudburst combined which requires you to know when damage or healing is needed on top of that in raid situations you can do what is commonly referred to as fishing for procs where you're using living flame in order to try and get essence burst procs which are going to allow allow you to cast your next essence ability for free which stacks up twice so you can do that in raid environments and fish for these procs when the damage is happening you can unleash your essence ability something like emerald blossoms onto the raid for insane burst healing capabilities so this actually requires you prior knowledge of the fight but i don't think this alone puts preservation evoker in the proactive category of healers because it is just one form of optimizing your hps but i do have to mention the preservation of Oka, you can get into trouble if you don't know how to optimize this class you can use verdant embrace and all of a sudden you're going to jump to your tank and then eat a frontal and die or use something like deep breath for dps and then you land in an awkward position and again have a premature death I think there's a lot of easy ways to mess up with Preservation of Ochre initially, so I think there is a decent skill ceiling to start with this healer. But the fact that you have an easy DPS rotation, which provides a lot of DPS for very little effort, as long as you can apply or aim your fire breath in the right direction, you're going to do pretty well. But the main reason why I might change Preservation of Ochre in this ranking, again, check out the summary section of this video, because during fights where people are really spread, during fights where people do not stack, especially in raids or certain mythic encounters preservation of ochre can have a lot of difficulty majority of preservation of ochre heals are 30 yards and it can be difficult on fights where people are spread but you can play around it with echoes echoes is no longer cast time it's instant and you can apply echoes and then you can proc on people regardless of their positioning but that's enough of evoker talk let's go and talk about our next healers and that is going to include the melee healers so if you're going to play a holy paladin in melee i think they're going to be somewhat difficult to pick up initially but if you're playing or opting into Holy Paladin range build, they're going to be somewhere here. One of the best entry-level healers if you're playing the range build. If you decide to play melee, I think their difficulty is going to be increasing significantly. And in my opinion, any new player that is looking to heal in Dragonflight, the fact that you're going to pick a healer that requires melee positioning, it's going to be inherently more difficult than playing range. When playing melee, you have to anticipate frontals, you have to know the trash mechanics, you have to know the boss mechanics. In certain situations, playing melee can be easier, but for majority of the time, I will say melee is harder than range. And the fact that Holy Paladin has multiple builds, but the melee build requires you to stay in melee in order to increase your healing because you have things like Crusader Strike, which are going to build up your holy power. The moment you have to step out of melee, things can get hectic, and I think new players are going to find it relatively hard. But at the end of the day, Holy Paladin is not an overly complicated healer to play. It is a reactive healer. You are building your holy power through multiple different means, and then you're deciding on how to spend that. You can either use it on something like single target heals like World of Glory, you can use it on AoE heals like Light of Dawn, or on DPS abilities like Shield of the Righteous, depending on which talent build you end up going, both in raid and mythical situations. But the fact that your mastery requires other people to stay relatively close, which can be out of your hands, and also you can have mana issues as Holy Paladin using the basic melee rotation can be somewhat difficult for new healers. And now let's go to our next healer, and again, we're continuing with the melee healers, and that is going to be Miss Weaver Monk. If you're playing the range, Miss Weaver Monk, the difficulty is going to be a lot lower, but if you do opt in for the melee build, I think Miss Weaver Monk can provide you with a, a pretty high skill ceiling, and in my eyes, it's more difficult than Holy Paladin. First of all, if you're trying to optimize your DPS and healing as a Miss Weaver Monk, you can have somewhat of a rigid rotation when using things like Ancient Teachings, when trying to optimize things like Red Crane, or get the most value out of Feyline Stomp. 
And on top of that, I think a lot of mysteries are going to fall into this panic mode where things go wrong and you start to overheal, overuse things like Vivify, overuse things like Enveloping Mist, and you can't have mana issues if you play Mist Weaver incorrectly. And outside of Revival, a lot of your HPS cooldowns requires build-up time, which to some extent you can say they require proactive type of gameplay, both in Raid and Mythic Plus, which requires you to anticipate when damage is going to be incoming. And hey, did I mention that some of your talents and abilities have limited range so much similar to preservation of ochre and now let's go to our last remaining healers and these are the healers that i consider to be true proactive healers because in order to optimize or get the best logs in mythic plus in raids you will need to know when damage is going to happen and we're going to start off with restoration druid now a lot of people are going to look at this and they're going to be like what Resto druid is the easiest healer to play you just press with juve and wild girls on cooldown and you're top of the hps and I agree to some extent. I do think that Resto Druids have been spoiled in Shadowlands because Druid HPS was like 15% ahead of everyone else outside of Mistweaver. And if you just misplayed your Resto Druid, you probably would still be the top HPS in your raid group, but your logs would be still relatively weak. But again, I have to mention the Resto Druid is a relatively easy healer to pick up initially when you're starting to play World of Warcraft because, again, you're looking at Rejuve, you're looking at Wild Goat, and the power of the class is going to overshadow the complexity that it's required to achieve maximum performance. But for this reason alone, I'm going to place Resto Druid as an easy healer to start with, but a healer that has a really high skill ceiling, which means that you can have a good time initially, but then if you really want to optimize, you have to spend hours and hours and hours in order to maximize the potential. Just a small example of this if you want to optimize your dps as rest of druid especially in something like mythic plus environments pressing moonfire and sunfire is going to give you decent value but if you want to optimize your dps you might look into feral form and then all of a sudden you have a bunch of new abilities to press and the rotation can sometimes be more difficult than some standalone dps classes in dragonfly and then when you go to rating situations you can press rejuvenation you can press wild growth and you might run into mana issues because you do have to prep for ramps very similar to something what discipline priest has to do you have to anticipate when damage is going to happen you have to start applying your hots before damage happens you have to think whether you're going to be convoking whether you're going to be convoked flourishing whether you're going to be using tranquility or if you can actually combine your talents or shadowlands tier set that made into dragonflight as reforestation if you can combine that with something like convoke for additional healing so even though you could probably do good hps as resto druid who just presses buttons randomly the difference between a bad resto druid and a druid that actually maps out the cooldowns and when to use them is going to be insanely big but keep in mind guys in this list i'm placing resto druids as somewhat difficult healer to play i think resto druid if i was just aiming at mythic plus content it would be very different i think resto druid is a lot easier in mythic plus than it is in raid situations because in raids it might take a lot of practice to execute the perfect ramp you need to know the damage patterns while in mythic plus you still have to know the damage patterns are anticipated but a lot of the times your passive hots or healing overtime abilities might help with the healing requirement and now let's go to a healer that i consider to be the most difficult or most unfair friendly towards beginners but i'm not saying you should not play this healer if you do enjoy a challenge i think this mini priest is going to provide you with a lot of fun now i probably would have placed this mini priest in a lower tier but i ran out of tiers, so i'm just going to be placing it here now why is this mini priest regarded so difficult to play what is the story because it is again like resto druid a true proactive healer if you're doing raid content and especially raid content i think the difficulty of this mini priest stems in raids because you have a very rigid ramp rotation you have to know before damage happens you need to apply your atonements to things like power of radiance you need to figure out which ramp you're doing and then when damage happens you need to start using your dps abilities so let's take a situation where you're going to mess up your ramps in raids resto druid can mess up the ramp and all of a sudden they're going to pop their cooldowns maybe not in the exact right moment your hots are still going to be doing some sort of healing if you mess up your ramp as a discipline priest your atonements are not going to be doing any healing if you don't combine it with a good dps rotation but again this can be made a little bit easier if you apply your rapture ramps properly where you're applying shields on a lot of people in raid situation if there's any damage you're going to be the first healer to get to that damage and that is going to inflate your hps numbers but at the end of the day discipline priest has a bonus of shorter cooldowns to micromanage which can sometimes feel overwhelming especially for someone who's new in this game but just like resto druid i would actually place discipline priest in an easier tier when looking at mythic plus purely because it is easier to execute the ramps or the ramp requirement is not as strict in mythic plus as it is in raids but discipline priest can still have a lot of problems in mythic plus content especially when you're approaching certain affixes like grievous historically speaking when you're doing grievous weak 
weeks, you might swap from Discipline Priest to Holy. We'll have to see if the same is going to be true in Dragonfly. So this summarizes my video in terms of healers that I consider to be the best for beginner. And I hope you're watching this section because I'm going to mix up some of the rankings here because I don't think they're truly representative of my opinions, depending on situation. So first of all, I'm not 100% sold on the ranking for preservation of Oka. I think that when you're approaching content where there's a lot of spreading and people are not stacked, you're going to have a somewhat of a difficult time. But that is somewhat niche. But if you are approaching situations where people are spread, I think I would actually place them somewhere like this. I think I would place them in a more difficult situation than the melee healers. Because melee healers, they have to stay in melee, but the range is still 40 yards, at least for the majority of the melee healers. So this would be the number one thing that I would change. Depending on situation for preservation of Ochre, I think it can be somewhat more difficult, but it really depends on the situation. If you're playing a ranged Holy Paladin, I think a ranged Holy Paladin could go somewhere here. I think the difficulty of ranged Paladin is very, very... It's lacking. A lot of the, your heals are going to be reactive. You see people take damage, you're healing them, especially with Marad's build. You're one of the best spot healers in the game, and being a spot healer is easier than being a proactive healer, in my opinion. Again, if you're playing a melee, the difficulty is increased. The same could be said for Mistweaver, but I genuinely believe that Mistweaver is more difficult than a Holy Paladin. It does have a somewhat rigid DPS rotation that you have to follow or you can't follow during your, you know, your ancient teachings, your things like your Feline Storms, your Red Crane, your cooldown usage and things like that. You can run into this, hey, you have to use this 1 to 3 rotation. And on top of that, I know a lot of people are going to disagree with my Resto Jude evaluation because Resto Jude HPS is so strong that you're not really punished for misplays. But I do generally think that Resto Jude could be a really good healer to pick up for new players because you can start off relatively easily, but you can have such a high skill ceiling. If you're not looking to optimize your Feral form, if you're not looking to optimize your raid performance, if you're just going to be pressing Rejuve and Wild Growth, yeah, Resto Jude is going to be a lot easier to play. But if you're actually trying to min-max Resto Jude to that 99 percentile, you're going to really have to work for it. So I'm just trying to make the differentiation before people just get too angry about this evaluation of this ranking. But again, guys, let me know about my healer ranking in terms of difficulty. Make sure that you're making a distinction between healer class power versus healer complexity. Let me know if I made some mistakes. Let me know which healer you consider to be the best healer. Or if your friend asks you, hey, I'm coming back to World of Warcraft and I want to heal. Which healer are you going to recommend to them and why? Let me know and I'll see you in my next video.